But for anybody who just came in, we just got the patch notes. It's like 50 pages of everything happening in season four. We just read through it and analyzed it and actually even contacted Blizzard on a couple of things um, to see how it's going. And I reduced it into this little sheet as we always do. So let's talk about it. So let's, I'm just going to go through these very, very quickly. So on the items, there's less affixes that drop naturally on items, but in the end game, you'll actually get more affixes after you do all the crafting with them. It took away the bad affixes, the damage on Tuesdays. Affixes are punchier, meaning you're going to feel them a lot more when you get like really big upgrades, which is going to be nice. Um, they have brand new affixes like resource on kill. Any legendary above monster level 95 is always going to be eye level 925, which is the maximum value, which is way better than what they had before because uh, you used to only get your 925 loot from world bosses and Duriel, and it was garbage. They improved the gems. This is kind of mysterious. We'll have to check how they did that. They reduced the item drop rates, thank God. So we're not going to get 10,000 yellows anymore. They took away some of the material costs, and there's new salvaging rewards. We'll see how that all balances out. But it would be so great if you run through a dungeon and maybe you get like three yellows and a legendary, and then you can look through it really quickly and be done. There's a gold cost cap when enchanting. It's not going to scale, hopefully, to 100 million gold. I don't know what the cap is. We'll have to check on the PTR. You can acquire Forgotten Souls globally now. Uniques can drop in World Tier 1 and 2. I think there are still some restrictions here. Ubers can drop at monster level 85. New crafting system tempering adds two affixes to ancestrals, one affix to the other things, but who cares? We care about ancestrals. Um, you have infinite uses once you get the books to apply the stats that you want, and there is a reroll limit on each item. Um, greater affixes. They only drop in world tier 3 and 4 on ancestrals and uniques. So uniques are in world tier 3, ancestrals are only in world tier 4. They have 1.5x the normal power. They're visible on the ground. So the, the interesting thing about greater affixes is, is this is going to serve as your pseudo loot filter. When you get into the real end game and you're going to be tempering and masterworking something, because of the way masterworking works and the cost of it, you will probably only want to masterwork on something where you hit the greater affix of the thing that you want, and the greater affixes will be visible on the ground. So I'm thinking of greater affixes as our loot filter. At a certain point, you may not pick up the certain yellows if they don't have this visible icon next to the item. They're drop only. You can't enchant into them. This is similar to last epoch's exalted system. Master working is end game crafting. You get the resources from the end game system. The pit. There's twelve ranks. Um, at ranks four, eight, and twelve, you get a massive upgrade on one stat. The dream would be to hit all of those massive upgrades in the same stat that you care about. That's a greater affix. Yeah, at every other rank, it's going to upgrade all of them a little bit, which is why it's important to get very high, like implicit roles before you start and to hit the uh, greater affix on the thing that you care about the most before you start master working. And the, these materials might be kind of rare because they drop in the pit, which is the end game thing. Codex of Power now has every legendary in it. The highest role that you salvage is stored. They increase the ranges, which in turn should improve some of them. And the further you go into the game, the higher the values that you get with a new UI. And they also have a search function, I believe. I believe they demonstrated a search function. So this is going to be uh, quite beautiful. Helltide now is available in World Tier 1 and 2. It's less dangerous because you're just starting out, so there's less density and no meteors. When you get into the further hell tides, they're going to implement the stuff from the vampire theme that people really liked. Think of when the blood seekers ambush you. There's a threat level. They're going to ambush you with maximum density and a boss. And then your threat level will reset. And then there's a cursed ritual where you'll gather baneful hearts, I think they're called, from chest to summon an event. It alerts everyone in the zone that there's a massive ambush and a boss coming with great rewards. We'll see how great they really are. 
the pit. It unlocks after Nightmare Dungeon 46, so this is an endgame thing. It's like Greater Rift, 10 minutes to clear the rift and the boss. Every death you every death that you suffer is going to deduct time and at the maximum it's going to deduct 90 seconds per death at 3 deaths. If the timer expires, you you will receive the loot but you won't get the master working materials. Uh if you clear it faster, you unlock more tiers of the pit, and there's hundreds of tiers of difficulty. Group play in the pit favors the leaders. So if you're the leader of the group, you get the lion's share of the loot, and you're the only one who can get the Stygian stones, which summons the uber bosses. So group play people might say, oh, this is going to be garbage. I'm not going to go play the pit with my friends, and that's fair. But another major problem that Diablo 4 has is the game in the end game is super unfair towards solo players. So this is why a change like this, something, something to this effect is important. Um, the boss ladder, the new Andario boss, the materials drop from Beast and Ice and Lord Zir has the same uber drop rate as Duriel. You can summon two level 200 uber versions of the bosses. Again, the Stygian stones drop in the pit right here. All items are 925. They have way higher rewards. You get a resplendent spark. It's not clear if you get a resplendent spark on the first kill at all that is an uber boss, or if you get one when you kill each of them for the first time. I read it as the first kill at all, um, but we'll have to see. Uh, so we already the class updates are down below. So let's delete this. Game updates. So there's a bunch of new uniques. Here are some highlights from some of them. There's a Blood Surge unique that explodes, explodes corpses for mini Novas and damage. This is already borderline the, one of the best skills in the entire game. It's certainly the best leveling skill. So the fact that it got a brand new unique that makes it even stronger is crazy. Um, there's a Rapid Fire unique that lobs exploding arrows. Whenever you read something like that, it could be godly or it could be garbage. We won't know until we try it. The frozen orb stuff we'll talk about later. It's going to be crazy. Uh, Firebolts shot through firewall spawns four of them, and they deal double damage. Can they shotgun on bosses? You might be able to kill a boss instantly if it works. Um, incinerate splits into three beams, dealing 85% damage. So it's a massive damage buff. The problem with incinerate is you're standing still channeling. So maybe incinerate is good in like super end game when you're not rushing through, like a super, super high pit run. Still hard to understand how Incinerate is going to play into the game um, unless you can keep Incinerate frying all the time. I wish there was a, a power that kept Incinerate shooting stuff out of you for like five seconds after you've passed it or something. They nerfed Banish Lords into Vaults. They said they were going to do that. All minions gain 100% of your attributes. We talked to Blizzard and confirmed this means everything, including crit and attack speed. And they updated the skill tags. Okay, so now that we look at the classes, um, they took away the 10% damage reduction that was innate on barbs. They said that. You're going to see a lot of nerfs on barbs. Charge got nerfed. Uh, the damage, the cooldown. Hoda got nerfed. You used to get percent damage for your fury. Now it's crit chance. You stack a million fury, it used to be much better. You already have an inherent crit chance and you can only get 100%. So this is a major nerf to Hoda and charge. Unbridled nerf or unbridled rage was nerfed. This is the key passive that all the barbs were taking. You're going to see all of these nerfs are essentially stacking with each other. You played like Hoda charge. Charge is nerfed. Hoda is nerfed. The key passive is nerfed. The axe uh, expertise is nerfed, overpowering, berserking, getting your cooldowns back is nerfed. Um, overpower is nerfed again on the legendary powers. They're bringing those builds down. From reading all of these changes, I still think Barb's going to be really good. Barb was really just that much better than every other class. I don't mind these nerfs, and we'll test it on the PTR to see uh, how far they've fallen. The Ancients are buffed, and they buffed Kick, Dust Devils, Double Swing, and Leap with Legendary Powers. Rage of Haragath used to be godly, but there was a bug with it, and then we stopped using it entirely. Now it works on Ultimates, where you apply a bleed and it reduces the cooldown, so maybe we use this to get, like, Infinite Wrath of the Berserker or something. 
onto the druid, they just got buffs everywhere, which they kind of needed it. They buffed the spirit boons, the generators, the passives, the glyphs, their legendary powers. Last rate seems very good, and shred with a with a uh, codex of power thing that you can get in the first zone is going to give you 20 spirit on kill. So for the first time ever, you will actually have some sustain. And with the minion changes, maybe a shred minion build will actually be like an S tier druid leveling build for once. Uh, Necromancers. Pretty much, I think 99% of players next season will either play Necromancer or Sorcerer. And our minion overlords have arrived. Colossal buffs to minions. There are more minions. They do more damage. They have better multipliers. There's easier functionality to trigger all of their effects, including their unique ring, the Ring of Mendelin. They have improved AI. God, you never see this in any game. I wish I could see this in PoE, Last Epoch, and Diablo 4 every patch note. They're actually going to run ahead of you and attack. Thank God. Um, as an example, Shadow Mages, now their attacks pierce, they deal more damage, and they throw extra bolts. Or you might go Bone Mages to have an extra chance to throw a Bone Spear if it's on your bar. That seems super overpowered. Or, if you want them to just be supporty Mages, then they can auto-apply Vulnerable for you, depending upon what build you need or a group play where you might need it. They buffed Blood Mist. No more uh, Senior Citizen Necros that are the slowest movers ever. It took away the blood mist penalty, movement penalty, and also there's an aspect that increases it by 20% for a 40% increased buff to blood mist and some other buffs uh, across the necromancer class. So, but mainly it's for minions, and this seems crazy strong. Rogues got some buffs to grenades, flurry, and inner sight, among other things, but rogues were in one of the most, one of the best states, and they're one of the most cla balanced classes in the game. I'm not surprised that they didn't get that much. Sorcerer, the mastery skills are now, now count as core skills, so that's very good news for skills like firewall, for example, which is a mastery. And uh, if we come down here, they made massive updates to Frozen Orb with Conjurations. It's doing way more damage. A new unique spawns conjurations that also throw frozen orbs. You get more conjurations. You get one hydra for free, and there were two unique. There were two, um, two legendary powers that gave you extra conjurations to each. You could put one on your amulet and one somewhere else, not on your weapon. So you get five conjurations. Now you can combine it into one and put it on your amulet, so that's plus one conjuration again, and then it also frees up a, an aspect slot. So you could probably gain plus one conjuration on top of it and an aspect slot. And then another aspect they're at, that they're adding is 25% DR on summoning a conjuration. And they said they're going to remove a ton of DR, and DR is going to be insanely rare. So casting something that has no cooldown to get 25% DR, I think it's for 5 seconds, seems like one of the best legendary powers in the entire game. So Frozen Orb plus Conjurations from having Hydras everywhere and getting the DR here is going to be, is going to be massive. Uh, some other miscellaneous updates. After level 28, 80% of non-legendaries are going to be rare, so I assume that means you're going to get less blues and less grays and that stuff. After level 50, your legendary drop rate is going to scale faster, so you're going to be able to get your items faster. They consolidated a lot of the elixirs, and they added two new elixirs. One shoots holy bolts when an enemy dies. It just depends how strong this is. If this just one-shots everything, then we will use it for things like Helltide. But look at this one. Killing an enemy gives 3% movement speed, stacking up to 15 times. This is an elixir that gives you 45% movement speed. So Necros, with their Blood Mist and their new elixir, are going to be, with their minions, are going to be murdering everything. They're just going to run forward, and they're just going to lawnmower everything. The camera can now zoom out further in the options. That's a huge change for a lot of people. Controller movement skills are buffed, like teleport and leap. 
it moves as far as you direct the analog stick. So you actually now have some control over where you're going. They said that the dungeon event XP was buffed. Don't worry, I'll test it. Remember when I made this a long time ago and I tested a bunch of the events and I sent this to Blizzard and I said, some of your events are very good and some of your events are absolute garbage. Well, they said that they buffed it. So we'll test it and we'll see what it comes out to. Now here's the major one. Channeling times for objects goes down from 1 to 2 seconds to 0.75. This is freeing a prisoner, picking up a bloodstone, all of the objectives. It's great. I, I would ray, it, you cut it, in, cut it by threefold from 2 seconds to 0.75, but I'm just going to keep crying about it until they remove it from the game. Uh, I'll, I'll keep crying about it forever. And then unaltered legendaries and uniques can now be traded. So um, I don't mean to like, I consider myself like a realist, right? Like I'll tell it how it is. I don't need to say D4 bad and I don't need to sensationalize this and try to say everyone go play Diablo 4 now. It's completely saved. My honest and truthful opinion of these patch notes is these patch notes remind me of like POE patch notes where they actually dive deep into the game. They have listened to the community of a bunch of problems. They have taken a bunch of dog shit builds and seemingly made them quite viable and archetypes. And they've made core changes to the game that people have been begging for. Like, We've gotten a lot of patch notes that are many, many pages long and they're trying to improve the game. But this is the first time where I felt reading through all of these different pages actually was sh making key changes to the game pretty much everywhere. This shows me that they have an understanding of where, where things are working in Diablo 4 and where things aren't. I think for the. For one of the first times, this is actually going to open up a lot of super cool builds. And it's going to make making like a tier list for the classes very interesting to see what's, what's going to be fun. Druids might actually have a leveling build with, with Shred. And they also increase the damage of a lot of their generators, which is the whole reason that the 17 damage meme uh, came from. So... I'm very, very happy with these patch notes. I am totally okay if I log into the PTR next week and a lot of these things are just not working because Blizzard is doing a PTR. They're actually giving us time to test it. I'll give you a sheet. Woody will give you a sheet. Tons of people will give you a sheet and we'll test it for you. And you got a month to try to make some tweaks and then when it actually launches on the season, it will probably be pretty good if they can get some of these changes in. I, I, I've been waiting for this day for a while, man. And I feel like Diablo 4, we've said this a million times, that's such an inflection point. Some people have already written off the game. I really think that this magnitude of a, of, of a patch was required for them to retain the morale and the faith of the people that they're holding on to. And if season five can be similar to this, then we're, we're rolling here. We're rolling. So I'm, I've been very favorable toward this patch. There's only a couple of things that I thought were wrong or I did not understand why they changed them. I sent them a message on that. They can read it. They can make whatever decisions they want. Let's jump into the, let's jump into the PTR and let's try it. But I, I'm pretty excited, man. I'm, I'm more excited for this than I have been for Diablo 4 in a long time, to be honest.